everybody live from the lamplighter in gorgeous midtown memphis tennessee make some noise for your host phillips allen it's goner tv hello midtown you were supposed to cheer after that you're supposed to give me a chance to sit and that's all right, we'll do it again later. Uh, my name is Billups. We're here. It's another episode of Goner TV. Tonight, we're going to bring back the game show we've played with in the past called Did They Really? And uh, that is a trivia show where I tell contestants facts or things that I've made up about a subject, and they guess whether or not it's true. Um, tonight, the contestants are Benny, Bennett. Let's hear it for Bennett. Bennett will be competing against Honey Blunt for prizes, and hopefully uh, we're going to have some fun while we're doing it. Uh, as I was doing some trivia, uh, we're, we're doing all Halloween and horror trivia tonight, which I hope will appeal to some of you and hopefully our contestants. As I was doing some trivia, I found a couple of interesting bits I thought were fun to think about, and... Uh, Hopefully you'll find them interesting. You can think about them in your private time later. Um, I, I, so the, and, and these were, I, I really wanted to use these as questions, but I thought that the, the subject were just too weird to make a question out of. So I'm just going to tell you for fun. So while they were filming the movie Friday the 13th, the original, if you all are familiar with this film, it was 1980. Uh, Tom Savini was one of the people. He was a... Uh, a special effects person. So some of the cast stayed at the campground where Friday the 13th was being filmed while, they were, while the, the movie was being filmed. Some people stayed in hotels. Others, they were into it. They stayed at the, uh, at the campground, had fun, had campfires and stuff. This is a strange bit of trivia, but it's true. 
Lou Reed owned the farm next door to Camp uh, Crystal Lake, or what was playing Camp Crystal Lake. Lou Reed used to come over and play guitar at the campfires uh, while they were filming Friday the 13th. I just thought that was a neat piece of trivia. Imagine hanging out in the middle of the woods in New Jersey and Lou Reed comes stumbling through the woods. <laughs> I like the idea of that. The other piece of trivia that I found that I thought some of you might enjoy, especially if you're Hammer Horror fans, and I'm starting to feel like this is not a horror crowd tonight, <laughs> is uh, horror legends Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing, who you know were kind of the second generation of horror standby people, uh, British horror, Frankenstein, uh, Dracula, those kind of people. These two guys were really good friends in real life, and these two old men uh, hung out uh, until they were, you know, until they both passed, they were friends. And they were once asked to leave a movie theater because they were laughing at Looney Tunes cartoons too loudly and disturbing the other patrons. Just thought that was another good bit of trivia for you to think about on your own time. Because you're obviously not enjoying it now. All right, let's keep going. Well, I wrote jokes last time and nobody laughed at that either, so what are you going to do? Uh, you're familiar with the show um, a little bit. We're going to do the trivia show here in a few minutes. What other business do we have before then? We have a music videos block, and then we're going to get right into the questions. We'll also be doing some audience questions tonight, so you can win prizes uh, from that angle. So that's all the business I have with you at the moment. You guys ready to move on to a block of music videos? Yeah. Music videos can be seen in this box on the wall to my left here. And I think that's all the business we got at the moment. You guys ready to move on to it? Yeah. Let's check out some power supply music videos. You're watching Goner Television. <laughs> tries to call and no one knocks at the door no
We've got two guests tonight live here in the studio where we are. And let's bring out and say hello to Midtown's own Bennett. Come out and say hello. You can have a seat right here. How do you feel about the trivia tonight, Bennett? Oh, you can hold this. Thank you. I'm nervous. I don't, uh, I don't know a lot. Of Check his mic. I don't know a lot of answers. Oh, you, you'll have plenty of answers. Don't worry. It's just not whether or not they're the correct ones or not. Bennett works for MemphisForAll.com. Would you like to talk about that for a little bit? MemphisForAll.com is a website. Is that mic on? I can't hear him at all. Sorry, guys. Give us one second here. Check check. Oh yeah. It says. There he is. Hey 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 hey. There's Bennett. Hey. All right. Tell us about MemphisForAll.com. Or it's or it's just Memphis for All. I'm sorry. It's a nonprofit that uh, gets out the vote. Are you also doing vaccine outreach? Did I get that right? Mm-hmm. And can people go on the website and, and read about and make donations? Yes. And that's, as I said earlier, do it. MemphisForAll.com. That was that second part that I should have said the first time. But mm-hmm. All right. Our second contestant tonight is right here in Midtown with us. Behind the curtain, please welcome Honey Blunt. All right. Have a seat. Thank you for being here with us tonight. Thank you. How's that, Mike? Uh, hello. All right, I can hear that. And you do a show right here on Monday nights in the Lamplighter, don't you? Yes, I do. Tell us uh, about that. It is uh, Honey Blood's Rolling Room, and uh, we have it here every Monday night, and it is a uh, a real fun time for queer expression. I have successfully brought Jersey City drag to Memphis, Tennessee, and I'm so All right. (laughs) What what time does that start on Mondays? Uh, We start at 9.30 drag time. Okay. 9.30 drag time. That sounds like I understand that. All right. Are you guys ready to play this silly game? Yes. And you know I've said to the audience here, but I'm going to tell you again. All I'm going to do is read a Halloween or horror-themed fact, because it's October. And uh, some of these things will be true, some of them will be false. Some of them may resemble things you've heard in the past, but may not be true because I have changed them, because I might be lying or inventing facts. So you're just going to have to do your best. And we're going to start with Bennett. Bennett, are you ready to answer a question? Yes. All right, Bennett. Snickers is the most popular Halloween candy. Did they really? No. You are correct. One for Bennett. It turns out that Skittles is actually the most popular Halloween candy. (laughs) Did I do something? It's Reese's. Oh, it's Reese's? I actually, th- I got real nervous because I thought he said it was racist. And I was like, what did I do on now already? Here, I, <laughs> Don't be I, racist. I really stepped on it somewhere, dude. What did I do? All right. Uh, up to you, honey. You're ready. Yes. Sammy Davis Jr. was initially considered to play Beetlejuice in the 1988 Tim Burton film Beetlejuice. Did they really? Sammy Davis Jr.? No, no. Maybe. I, I'm sorry to say this, honey. I know it sounds like something I made up, but they actually wrote the movie with Sammy Davis Jr. in mind. I know it's one of those things that does not sound like it could be true, but I'm afraid you don't get the point on that one. Sorry. Sammy Davis Jr., that would have been quite a different movie. Yeah. Second round of questions. Bennett, Illinois produces the most pumpkins of any state in the Union. Did they really? I don't really think of it as an agrarian state, but... Yes. You're correct. 
Illinois Bell has produced the most pumpkins of any state in the union. I wouldn't have thought that. Honey, are you ready to answer? Yes. Okay, here we go. 35 million pounds of candy corn are produced each year. That's over 9 million pieces of candy corn in a year. Uh, oh, I mean, did they really? I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> nah, um, I, that's my fault I'm supposed to say it. That's like not putting in the form of a question. <laughs> <laughs> Only I'll be beaten, Alex Trebek would not. I'll, uh, I'll take a uh, yes for a... Uh, ding, ding, now. ding, you're on the board. That is absolutely correct. Can you believe it, Americans? It's candy corn. They support nine million pieces of candy corn every Halloween. All right. Well, we're actually, uh, that's the first round. Are we ready to, uh, we were going to go to the audience now. Do you guys want to go to the audience? Yes, you do, because we're yeah. to go out there. Do let's, we have a volunteer? Let's have the audience ask a question. We need a volunteer. We need a volunteer from the audience. We need somebody to come up to the microphone and read a question and stump the guests. Anybody? Somebody's going to have to do it. You get a prize yeah, yeah, if you, you stump prizes. the guest. We give you a question. All you have to we do is give read you it. the question. You just have to read you it. You just have to read it. There we go. There's a contestant. No, wait, but I forgot what happens. And who is he reading it to? That's the part I didn't understand about this. You but Hello. You, all you have to do, Frank, yes. is fool one person. Let's hear it for Frank. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Ugh. If either Honey or Bennett get the point, they get the point. Oh, and that's you, right. Yeah. And you do not get a prize. Do I, do I start with Bennett? N- you, it's, it's, oh, the, question is, okay. the question is posed to both. All so right. you have to fool them. Okay. Vincent Price was also a gourmet cook and authored several cookbooks. Yes. Point. <laughs> Point. That's true. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Let's hear it for him. Thanks for coming up. All right. So we're going to move on to round two, right? We're going to take a quick commercial break, and then we will be right back with round two. Yeah. Yeah. Does something happen during the break, or am I? Uh... It's there it is. Yeah. Oh. Recorded live like you've never heard before. You put your right hand in, and your left hand in. Then you can't begin to have it all. Don't you know that my heart is in? Don't you know, baby? Hey. On record and cassette from Dig Records and KMI. I nearly blew Brower, live and contagious. Oh, hey, I'm Robbie Grant, executive director of WYXR. We're a new nonprofit, non commercial radio station here in Memphis, Tennessee, broadcasting from the Crosstown Concourse. And you can listen to us online at wyxr.org. We got a lot of great shows like Goner's Own, Cole Wheeler, and Zach Ives, along with uh, other great DJs. Uh, you can check out our schedule at wyxr.org. And there's a lot of other great stuff happening. Tell them about it, Jared. Hello everyone out there in TV land. My name is Jared Papa Bear Boyd and you're here with us at 
WYXR 91.7 FM. If you don't have an FM tuner, listen to us on WYXR.org. It's a pretty cool experience. It might be even better. You know, when I was a little boy, I thought that I would grow up to be a radio host. Turns out, I grew up and I had to start running a radio station. Here's one of our really ah! famous personalities who's on the air. This is a really cool radio station because you can come here, drink beer, play a few music songs, and leave, go home. And no one pays you. So, if you're interested in a few drunken songs and a few disgruntled volunteers, you're in the perfect place. I stand by that. Hope you're listening at home and please donate to our efforts. Thanks to Ghana for having us on. 91.7 WYXR Memphis, Tennessee, the newest radio station in town. Join us. That one, that one's supposed to be one of my cat on it, but it, be a, that would be a different one. All right, we're up to round two, everybody. <laughs> Bennett and Honey are in a hot Thanks. race for, Thank you. for big color Thank you. prizes. I'm in the, lead. the next question is to Bennett. Uh, Bennett, Steve Martin auditioned for the role of Brad in the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yes. Did they really? They did. That's true. <laughs> that was a true factual statement. Honey, Johnny Depp was originally cast in A Nightmare on Elm Street because Wes Craven's daughter described him as quote-unquote dreamy. Did they really? Listen, I, I don't know. I don't know about Mr. Depp. Uh, so, but that seems like a little too detailed. That's a little too much. His daughter? No, I don't believe it. I'm not buying it. Well, I'm sorry. That one was actually true. Wes Craven's daughter did, in fact. No whammy. <laughs> That was all it took to get that role, was, was the daughter's uh, note. Wow. All right, we're, we're down to the fourth round. Bennett, the first first lady to decorate the, White, to decorate the White House for Halloween was Rosalind Carter. Did they really? I have no idea. Oh, yes. No, that one is not true. Dang. Too wholesome. Too wholesome to decorate. For well, odd, oddly enough, though, and this is—I think this is a weird, as weird as the fact I made up. It was Mamie Eisenhower. Wow. Wait. So you made this up? No. <laughs> there was a first first lady to decorate the White House. It, it was Eisenhower. It was Mamie Eisenhower. Yeah. Mamie. That is a true statement of fact. <laughs> Rosalind Carter was also a first lady. That's what makes it a lie. <laughs> That's what I'm going for there. All right. Um, honey, yes. the 1978 film Halloween was originally titled The Babysitter Murders. Did they really? No, no, I don't think, I don't think The Babysitter Murders. Honey, it's just not your night. No, that it's was not. a true statement of fact. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I guess I'm just too good a liar. Again. The Babysitter Murders. I'm glad they changed it to Halloween. Yeah, mm, yeah <laughs> it, it is a better title. All right. Now we go back to the audience question because that went so smoothly the first time. Do One more have, audience member. Do we this have question a volunteer goes, to win a prize? Come on up. Somebody do it, please. <laughs> Here comes somebody right now. Get up on that mic, Mike. And this question goes to Honey because Bennett was the answer last time. I won't, I won't read that one. Are we gonna? All right. Honey. Michael Myers' signature mask is actually a bleached Luke Skywalker mask. Did they really? I, no, no, it's not Luke. It's uh, it's um. Wait, no, I, I no, it's not. No, I don't have to tell you who. <laughs> yeah, it is. yeah, no, you got it. That you get a point no, for that. Gonna, That's the point. <laughs> It was not Luke Skywalker. It was Captain Kirk, as portrayed by William Shatner. The, the mask Luke, uh, came from a two-dollar store, evidently. And we are. So that was like worth like double the points, right? Like you know. Cause... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> There's loose rules here up on the table. Uh, so we got face-off coming up. We are going to face off for big points. 
in the final round between Bennett and Honey. <laughs> Thank you. You know, it's not sitting, not easy sitting up here either, so let's keep that in mind. Um, face off goes like this, and I've screwed it up almost every time we've done it, so we're going to do it right this time. What I do is, I'm going to give you three answers to one question. Two of the answers are correct, one is incorrect. You both will answer, and then I'll tell you the answer. So you each get a point for everything you get right. If you guys answer the same, you get the same question. Does that make sense? So three answers. <laughs> three answers. Two of them are correct. One is not. You just have to. Which a lie? So if you guess the if you guess the fake one, see if you guess the fake one, you've automatically got the true one. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. Yes. So we're gonna start with Bennett. Two of these now celebrity. Two of these now celebrity actors portray characters killed in the Friday the 13th series franchise. Which two? Kevin Bacon, Crispin Glover, or Corey Feldman? Now again, two of those answers are correct and one of them is incorrect. So, just a guess if you're not, not into it. Did they really? B and C. You say that B and C are correct. This is harder than it looks. So. Crispin is a hottie. Honey, two of these now celebrity actors portray characters killed in the Friday the 13th film franchise. Which two? Kevin Bacon, Crispin Glover, Corey Feldman. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chop Kevin Bacon. I'm going to give him the... Uh, okay. The so, two, so there's two yeses and one no. Yeah, the, he, one no is, the one no is Kevin. The two yeses are Corey Feldman oh, I see. and uh, Sarah McLaughlin. So no. What, what <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. I'm confused. So <laughs> Kevin Bacon survived is what you're saying. Kevin Bacon is the lie. The is lie, lie is okay. the bacon. Okay. And that's also what Bennett said. So. You each get one point. <laughs> <laughs> Corey Feldman survived the series, which gives you each a point. Am I? That's not right, is it? What's the what's the numbers in that? This isn't right. Corey Feldman lived. Corey Feldman lived. Yep. So you he get a lives point. actually. So Bennett has really run away with the game tonight. And that's the we want to do. Do you want to do one more audience question? Yes. Yeah. Go, come on. Somebody else come up for one we, more. Can we get one one more volunteer? You get to win a prize. All right. Everybody give it up for Laurel. Laurel. Um, Christopher Lee initially turned down the role of Dr. Loomis in the film Halloween, 1978. A role that went to Donald Pleasance. Lee later claimed it was the biggest mistake of his career. True or false? Or did they did really? They really? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Different game. Well, um, I hate to say it. I hope it doesn't sound ridiculous, but I don't know who any of those people are. <laughs> um, so I am... Uh, you have a 50-50 chance. I mean, uh, Christopher Lee, I mean, maybe to him it was his biggest mistake, but I don't know if that was his biggest mistake. So um, 
I'm going to say no. I'm going I'm to go out on a limb here and say no. It has gotten me this far. So I, will, I shall say it again. No. No. Unfortunately, the answer was yes. <laughs> Absolutely. That was a chance to catch up, but I'm afraid that Bennett has run away with the uh, game tonight. Thank you. We have so prizes for you. both The winner of, of the $100 gift card yeah, is $100 Bennett. Card, oh, my God. $100? What? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. I want to <laughs> have... I want to Excuse thank the me? Goner Academy on behalf of myself fuck you. and uh, oh, fuck the him. Lounge. And I want to thank my manager because I wouldn't be here. <laughs> thank you so much for this opportunity, Bob. It's my $100. And thank you. And thank you. I think he works here. And I'm not sure I'm what's really going on. Okay. Right now. I've never. You still win the $100 gift card. Let's we'll see. I want to thank. Of course, my parents, because for making me be, for letting me, for gi make giving me the opportunity to be here, and I want to thank my, I want to thank. Uh, Where's my hundred dollars? Yeah, that's Where's not actually. Hundred a gift card I got anyway. hundred, hundred dollars. Got the hundred thank dollars. you so much. And Jesse, I want to thank. Jesse, hey Jesse. Thank, excuse me. Give give the hundred dollars to Bennett, please. Did I? It's not for you. Well, but Bennett I left, so. <laughs> but I it was. Yeah, there he is, accepted. Let's thank our contestants tonight, guys. We have a, a prize for Honey as well, a gift bag. Thank you for putting up with this. Thanks for experimenting with our little game show. To reiterate, Bennett. MemphisForAll.com. Go and look at the work they're doing there. And Honey Show is on Monday nights here around 9.30ish. Right here in this room. Is it in this room? Yeah, you, you need look no further than this room on Monday nights. Thank you guys. We appreciate your patience and I hope you had some kind of fun with that.
All right, we are back on Ghana TV. That last video was by our, one of our featured artists tonight. Mim Brooks, that video. She did a great job. And do we, we have any further information about that? She tattoos here in town, is that what I understand? She does, and you can... You can Nashville, okay, Nashville. that's from, she's from Nashville. And that's in Tennessee. I don't know how many of y'all are familiar. Um, so we are going to do, now make sure that I have this crate, this correct. We're going to do a tarot reading right here. Oh, yes, absolutely. A little live uh, tarot moment. You know, right. it is um, Mercury retrograde, so they say. You know, uh, you know we're it's like moving backwards, but not really. Communication lines are down, metaphysically, so they say. <laughs> so if you've been having a rough time, you know, making it connect, uh, Mercury retrograde kind of forces you to focus on the communication that has already been had so new things can be found in it. Oh, thank you so much. Yes. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do like four piles for each of the element signs, right? The fire signs, the water signs, earth signs, air signs. And we're going to get a little general advice and, you know, maybe a little fun. You never know what kind of spirits come through at the lamplighter lounge. And how did you get involved in this? When did you start? Uh, well, uh, I didn't really trust a therapist. Uh, to insert themselves into how I heal. So I decided to insert myself into how I heal. And talking to the cards is really more like talking to the higher self. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. I'm just sort of reminding you of it. Okay. For those um, grounded people out there, that's what I'm doing. But for the spiritually enlightened people out there, I'm trying to give you some big from the void. Okay? So. Well, I'm going to have to let you steer on this one. I'm not very familiar, so you, get, okay. you tell me right. what we do. Listen, I can talk you through it. I'll okay. explain. I'll explain. All right. So um, I've got four decks here. I've got the Golden Girls Tarot, right? You can't be a drag queen tarot reader without the Golden Girls Tarot deck, that's for sure. Um, I got a little bit of the After Tarot, which are the original tarot cards, but stages after. And then I've got a little Oracle deck, and I've got a little advice deck that I made. This is the Poor Witch's Oracle. This is index cards. It's a living deck, so if I don't like the lesson anymore, I rip it out, and if I learn a new one, I, um, you know, put it in, put it on in, so it is alive, breathing. So I'm going to get started. I don't like to pull cards. I like to, like, let them, like, just jump out naturally because, um, you know, if I pull it, I really feel like that's, like, my energy, and I'm just trying to pick up whatever it is. So yes, so there may be some silence, but that is because... That's probably good though, right? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so the air signs get two. <laughs> Is that a pretty common practice, the, the, the falling, the waiting for um, the cards? I, 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 I mean, you I, just kind of do it that way. Absolutely. Like, you know. It's, I really it's don't know. That's interesting to me. It's whatever, um, it's whatever wants to hop out. Sometimes I can feel them jumping. Sometimes, you know, when I do end up pulling them myself, they're the cards that wanted to jump out anyway. So. I, I often eat food I dropped on the floor. It's kind of, similar, right? <laughs> kind of a similar thing. I got, not really, but, you know. You sort of collected these decks over the years. Uh, yes. Or do you call uh, them decks? Is that a proper word? Yeah, for that? no. Uh, I have like seven, eight, nine, really. Mm. Uh, this one is my favorite. The yeah. one I made. Though, well, is you the made most this one. That's that's very impressive. Really, it's neat. Well, it's like you know some things. Like I really enjoy how mm. I said it. Right. Mm. And I want to remember how it was worded. You know, you know. Sometimes you just gotta, you know, say it right. I, I do comics and they're terrible, but I like the way they look. You know what I mean? It's like that kind of thing. I mean, similar, you know. It's something I enjoy, you know. Okay. 
All right. All right, all right. So I'm going to get started with the fire signs. Okay. Okay. That is Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. Aries, the start. Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, we got some fire signs in the house. What? What? All right. I think that's me. Is that April, is that April or does that make a difference? Uh, what do you mean? The, the Aries. Oh, well, Aries. Aries is, uh, is the ram, the fire ram. Oh, Aries okay. is the starter of the passion. If fire is passion, okay, then okay, Aries okay. sparks the passion. Um, Leo personalizes the passion, and Sagittarius distributes the passion. And the same will work for all of the other signs, but in their own right. I'm not sure I, I'm not sure I know my sign. I was born in April. What day? The 6th. Okay, April 6th, 3rd through the 10th. It's the week of the, uh, week of the star. Okay. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> okay. So Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, since, you know, all the elemental signs sort of go through it all together, you know, if this is just a general reading, so please take what resonates, and, uh, uh, you know, if it doesn't leave it here, it's not for you. I love you. All right, beware of being sneaky right now because the temptation is real, it is there, but as long as you trust what you do know to be real in this situation and make sure you learn all sides before making a decision. This is Dorothy Spornak of the Golden Girls sneaking away from her roommates in the night. Yes, she, she's got something that she wants to keep hidden and we know Miss Dorothy would not keep it hidden unless she liked it. So, it is, this is the guilty pleasure card to some. To some readers, this is, you know, the tiptoeing, you know, make sure everybody around you is um, up to par with your vibration of trust and how you are receiving their trust and uh, getting it. Uh, we got TikTok in reverse, right, represented by 30, which is three. This is the um, third card. Uh, numerology is where tarot and astrology intersect. So, uh, the Empress is the third card. This is the card of, like, you know, with, tic with TikTok in reverse, it's all about patience. The Empress is the one who lets it come to her. She's ruled by Venus, so very Taurian energy here, good earth grounding time for you guys to like, honestly, take it easy. I'm a fire sign, I'm a Sagittarius, full disclosure. Uh, <laughs> full disclosure, yes. Thrice ruled by Jupiter, and not mad about it, okay. But um, no, it is really about understanding that you have done enough, and maybe now is the time to really just sit down Take it easy, stop sneaking around, and allow what you have asked for to come to you. Asking is the first step of manifestation. So, to all my Aries, Leos, and Sages out there, uh, take it easy, it is coming, right? And uh, the uh, advice card for my personal deck is, this is really a past life lesson. Uh, something both little yet big that you are finally going to release from your uh, karmic load. You really just get to kind of start new and take it easy. That is why, you know, this little moment has happened. Like, retrograde is rough. Retrograde is rough for anybody ruled by Mercury. Whenever it's, like, in reverse, you are too going to feel in reverse. But long story short, you've done enough. Whatever you have to release in this time, you have the downtime now to release it and make sure it's being spent for you, okay? Because fire, give a lot of energy. Give a lot of energy. You need to keep some back. You stay broken. All right. Moving on to our water signs to cool off that little moment, all right? We, um, ooh, okay, all right. So actually for you water signs, communication is gonna be coming really soon. As soon as this retrograde is over, it's almost like immediately gonna come in with the communication cards, the Eight of Wands. This is very strong Mercury energy, the arrows of love to some. Mm. But um, we have it followed by well, in order for it to come in, we've got the Nine of Wands. So Eight of Wands followed by the Nine of Wands is something is coming in when you let something go or someone's coming in to help you let something go. Essentially, you see the two people here with all of their um, wands are passion, wands are fire. So they're holding on to uh, a lot and uh, someone's gonna come in and help you take care of it. And uh, I mean, that's what it looks like really here with yin being our main advice, like the, allowing the good things to surface, you know, you don't have to do it alone. And yin with yang, also the counterpart there, someone coming in to give you that, you know, boom, boom, bam. Um, you guys got two advice cards. So uh, this is, uh, leave them on red, right? You may have to release something right now with this nine of wands. Let something go that you're attached to passionately. Maybe not leave them on red like a person, as opposed to like also like leaving something alone that is no longer a vibrational match to uh, who you are becoming. 
and um, leave them on red. Maybe they'll just get the point. If not, who cares? It is, uh, it's not your problem anymore. Sometimes silence is loud and you should allow your silence to speak for you. Stop worrying about what to say because perhaps there is nothing to say. And um, you also got save yourself, right? I mean, someone is coming in to save you and it looks like you're gonna have to get out of it because if you can't save yourself, someone comes in to save you, then they're stuck with you because it has to be about you first. A lot of people will say, oh, honey, Blunt, you preach selfishness. And I'm like, yeah, no, I totally do because it's like, <laughs> it's the thing, you know? When you deeply love somebody or something, and you know, if they were like dying in the middle of the street, you better make sure your shoes are tied before you run after them, you know? You could, you could, I mean, you could make up for the speed in the time that you would save, in that 10 seconds to tie your shoes, you could make it 10 seconds faster. You know, it's all about putting yourself first. And you know, if somebody is coming in, don't allow them to sit with something that's not right. So to all my uh, Cancers, my Pisces, and my Scorpions out there, this little message is for you. That's, I forgot to say that at the beginning. Like, that's the water. Those are the water ask. signs. Okay, well, yeah. um, water is emotion. Water yeah. is emotion. Water is love. So um, cancer, like, you know, starts up that emotion. Feel mm. is the initial feeler of that emotion. Uh, Scorpio personalizes the emotion in the same way that, you know, Leo did. That's why Scorpio is the water Leo, so to speak. And uh, the distributor between the two that distributes that emotion is uh, Pisces that connects the two, right? Uh, Pisces is really the only one that can uh, get yelled at by cancer, but at the same time yell at Scorpio. That's why Pisces is so important. So maybe that message is for y'all out there. But um, this last part is save yourself. No one is riding in on a horse and no one is climbing your hair, at least not right now. You have to get yourself out of this one because you got yourself out of the last one. You know, maybe you should do some saving, right? Maybe, maybe you're saving somebody. Maybe it's the partner thing, you know? Hit me up. If this is about you, hit me up for a personal reading. We can expand upon this. You know, if you were feeling it, hit me up. I can talk about that all day. But you, save yourself. Leave them on red. If it's not good for you, it's not good for you. You are in charge of recognizing what is a vibrational match to your energy and where it's all about what you want and where you want to go. So knowing what to ask for is really... Uh, I think the hardest part for the water signs during this retrograde. So, um, moving on to the earth signs, that is Taurus, that is Virgo, and that is a Capricorn! Uh, yes, so we've got the Page of Wands here, so how very Capricorn to have this, um, <laughs> to have this like little moment, you know what I mean? Like, this is Sophia, like, uh, the Page of Wands is an immature approach to passion. It's a childish approach to passion, the passions of, you know, the uh, of really innocent, innocent, beautiful things. It's followed by the wheel of fortune in reverse. So right, you know, when things are not on an up, when things are not on an upturn, they're on a downturn, and when things are on a downturn, they're about to be on an upturn. So, the wheel of fortune ruled by Jupiter right now, which uh, has not gone into retrograde. So if you are have Jupiter heavy in your chart, um, you might be having it a little bit easier than some right now. But um, I mean, there's naivety here, there's fun here, there is uh, wisdom like uh, old soul energy, but living in a very like childlike, uh, kind of like over and over again meeting for the first time kind of feeling. But also at the same time, I have done this before. Uh, that, you know, that makes sense. And we have message in a bottle, which is uh, really all about, you know, that message is on its way to you. The communication that you seek is coming to you, Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. And it's coming so slowly, and uh, you are this little pelican maybe that gets to rest on this bottle as it floats in. Because, I mean, the main thing about retrograde is really like you have done enough and to focus really, really hard on, um, on just breaking down the barriers that keep you from receiving what you have asked for. Sometimes we are our own worst enemies and we put ourselves, we put that message in a bottle and we can't get it, you know, open again when it really is a part of you and, uh, and your journey. So, the advice is to spend time alone, right? I mean, this is alone, immature passion, you know, talking to oneself, getting to know oneself, like I, the old soul. Like, it's, this is a return to, yeah, this is a return to self. This time is about a return to self, which means a return to your ideal place in your world as soon as this retrograde is over. Uh, getting to know yourself is so important always. You are also a friend that you have to visit. And an, an opportunity to be alone is an opportunity to see into your future and grow. 
which is really like the which is really what retrograde is all about. Um, what questions need answers? Because if you spend enough time alone and you just sit and think and open your mind, you can answer any any question that you truly have from within. I mean, that's the message in the bottle. That's the knowledge trying to break free. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the tea. That's the tea, you earth, you earth people. Um, now, uh, I'm moving on to this heavy pile here since, you know, we have a lot of uh, good Mercury communication energy, right? Uh, we t uh, let's talk about Earth being stability. Who, who, are, who, are, who, are the, who are these people? I think this is me in here. I'm not sure. Okay, well, uh, listen, uh, you were Aries. You were, at, you were at the beginning. You're the week of the star. April is Aries? I was there. April is Aries. Oh, okay. Right. Central, so the third through the tenth is such a strong, such a strong moment. It really is the, oh, okay. but it's the birth of the ego. Aries oh, gives okay. us the ego. Aries gives us the uh, sense of self. Great, okay. Yeah. So, so, uh, sorry, I, miss, I misunderstood <laughs> that somewhere. All right, uh, let's move. Yeah, let's get, let's hear what's going on. But uh, Capricorn starts the stability. Uh, Taurus personalizes that stability for the earth signs on this pile, uh, and Virgo distributes that stability. So uh, now moving on to the air signs, air is communication. So we have Libra, who sparks the communication, and then we have um, Gemini, who is distributing that communication, and then we have Aquarius, who is personalizing that communication. And uh, it, I mean, that's, I mean, we'll get, we'll get to it, because I've got some of my favorite cards here. Um, we got the Ten of Pentacles, so that is like a bun dance. Mad because I'm getting money in a bun dance. I have done a bun dance, and it is quite, uh, it is quite fun. So lucky you guys. I mean, this is like, uh, this is uh, optim, op, uh, ultimate, okay, ultimate stability, and um, really coming in for you, like given for you. And it's it's the tree here because it's like no one's going to take it away. It's so ingrained, you know. Uh, it was always on its way to you, and you were always on its way to it uh, when it comes to abundance. And you must never forget that, and that goes for all the signs. We've got the Ace of Wands in reverse, so uh, offer of passion from the universe right now being turned down because it does look like you do have enough. Um, maybe feeling a little orphaned here with the uh, card uh, orphaned, which is really all about, you know, leaving yourself out in the cold, and there really is no need to do that. But it's uh, represented by five. Five is a number of change, so the change is... Uh, it really is coming. You are going to get to a sort of, um, you know, welcome this abundance into your life. Just something that you wanted may not be for you right now, or it's not a vibrational match. And really, that would, that's what Mercury retrograde is for, to remind you what you are a match to and what you want to experience. Because Mercury retrograde tends to come in whenever we are experiencing a lot of options. And so Mercury's like, okay, well, you know, which one do you really want to take? Uh, uh, now is the time to like really work on things here with the uh, Eight of Pentacles. So this is all about like really stepping back and seeing what you've done, taking stock of like all of your hard work and investments, what you've poured yourself into, what you have, um, the stability that you have created outside of yourself. You know, what is that to you? Uh, explore that, admire that, appreciate that. Maybe leave it alone enough to appreciate it because sometimes you really don't know what you have until you do take a step back. And um, we have the Hanged Man. So he is in reverse, upside down, it doesn't matter. He's all about a new perspective. He is enlightened, and it does seem like someone is coming in to bring him uh, the knowledge, right? Because this is the after tarot. This is the next stage. So someone is coming in to bring something beautiful, and it's going to offer uh, the knowledge to make that next move. I could think that thing that does get you off the pedestal and realize what you do want and allows your Ten of Pentacles to come in. Like, this is ultimate. This is that good good. Ten of Pentacles is the good good. Um, so, I mean, maybe you need to help somebody with this orphan thing. Maybe someone around you is feeling orphaned. Alone, really. And, you know, orphaned is such a strong word. But uh, alone, you know, feeling like, truly like, I uh, cannot assuage these feelings of loneliness because I have no relationship with my own spirit. And um, the real tea is that if you don't know what to do next, help someone. It'll make you feel good and kind of harder to doubt that you're a decent person, you know? If you're one of those people, that, especially air signs, Libra, uh, Gemini, and Aquarius, I am talking to you. If you're one of those people who, like, feels bad all the time because they, you know, you don't really, like, think that people think well of you, then start doing good, you know? If you feel like people are doubting your kindness, just be kind. Just be you. Do that thing that you do, which is help people. And um, finish, right? Finish what you've started and complete things that you haven't because the... Um, Ace of Wands can also really mean unfinished. Like, you know, 
I'm letting it go, but I'm still holding on to it kind of thing. Like passion that does need to be uh, said goodbye to before you let it go kind of thing. Um, you can't just let it go. You've got to say, thank you for teaching me this lesson. Really appreciate it. Do you need anything? No. Bye. And uh, finish. Finish what you've started and complete things that you haven't. To see something done is a wonderful feeling. Procrastination, on the other hand, can keep us from jumping into things that we are not a vibrational match to. Procrastination can be a beautiful thing at times. So uh, maybe there's a reason why you've waited so long to finish it, but it still can be finished. So, yeah, that's the tea. That's the tea, sis. I spilled it all over the thing. That's great. That is really interesting. I have never seen anything like that up close before. That was a lot of fun. I wish we could have a small camera here, too, because the art on some of these is really amazing. Are, they, what, are these special kinds of decks that you've collected? Oh, yes. Well, this is the... the um, or, and there's a Golden Girls one, too. I thought that was a... Uh, I thought that was a euphemism it's actually the golden no, it's girls actually, it's actually like the 78 cards. cards like this is say right here this is blanche right. uh, yeah uh, the nine of pentacles because uh she doesn't need a man she just gets them like that's the that's the point that's the point uh <laughs> she's not asking for it sometimes if you look too hard at it it just moves slower you have to like clean your house or some shit and take your mind off of it but that's the tip well i thought that was really great that was interesting thank you, thank you. and do you do this for people? You can they can they find you? Yes, uh, actually, yes, you can find me on YouTube. I uh, uh, do like a whole like eleven to fifteen minute video uh, for each sign every month. Well, that's past three months. I've just been like doing like personal readings, not really like updating YouTube. But I am making my grand comeback in October with a bunch of fun Halloween looks and some time. So it's going to be great. It's going to be great. But um, you can also you can find me on YouTube at Honey Blunt and. Uh, watch for that. I'm also here every Monday night at the Lamplighter Lounge with all of these girls and you can always hit me up after the show and I usually always have my cards on me so it really is, you know, at your convenience kind of thing. I won't seek you out. You gotta come find me. Okay. Well, do that. Come out on Monday nights. Honey Blunt was here on Mondays. There's a show here. I like towards the end of this, it says, uh, be kind, too. It's a, good, uh, it's a good sentiment to send us off into the world after tonight. Well, y you can keep that uh, in your pocket. Okay. Yeah, I will. I will. <laughs> I meant for everybody, but you, know, but you too. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all so much. I hope I helped somebody tonight. If you need to know more. Yeah, that was really interesting. Can. I thought that Always was fun. Find me. So what do we got coming up next? We got a block of some Gonerfest videos. We gonna run that right now? Yes. Here's all the, right. Here's the expats doing their new song "Ghost in the Record Store" off their new album, also out next Friday on Goner. You can pre-order on the website. All right. From Tucson, expats. Okay. All right. Right off the bat, from Bisbee, Arizona, where the Expats. Hi guys. This next song's off our new record coming out October 26th on Lovely Goner Record. It's called Ghost in the Motherfucking Record Store.
Hey there, we're back. And our next, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Honestly, wasn't expecting that. Um, our next guest for the uh, last block here of the show is we're going to talk to John Miller, who is doing the music uh, segment, who is organizing the music segments for Indie Memphis Film Festival this year. Indie Memphis is coming up, so let's bring John on and, and talk to him about what's going on there. John Miller, everybody, is he in the room? And he's, there he is. Oh, he was behind us the whole time. I didn't know that. That was kind of funny, because I didn't know you were doing that. John, how you doing tonight? Doing all right. How are you doing tonight? That mic is giving, you, giving a little bit of trouble. Yeah, we'll get there. So tell, tell us what you do for Indie Memphis, John. So, uh, yeah, uh, for uh, about the last 10 years or so, I've uh, worked with Indie Memphis, helping uh, pull together music documentaries and then uh, trying to match uh, films with uh, local music talent. Uh, Indie Memphis has been pretty great about consistently wanting to highlight the local music scene. So uh, luckily we're pretty uh, blessed with a ton of variety here. So whatever films that they're bringing in, I'm just trying to find something that we have here that really sets the mood uh, and lets people know what's going on. So when, when you, do you have live bands come in and match the films? Are you talking about picking films for the programs that, that the live music, the music programs? Uh, it's a little bit of both. Uh, so I'll, I'll work with the artistic director. Um, you know, we, we look at what uh, music documentaries are available uh, from year to year, and we try to pick uh, a lot of those that we think would fit with some of the overarching themes of the festival, as well as uh, trying to uh, just think some things that are unique to Memphis. Uh, wow. You know, try, trying to find things that would have a, a local connection. Uh, so, for example, this year uh, there's a documentary on uh, the Divine Spirituals label okay. that's recently been reissued uh, by Fat Possum. So uh, that that was a great opportunity to bring in Elizabeth King who uh, had recorded originally for the uh, label and has now uh, putting out her own original records that uh, Fat Possum uh, mm -hmm. has put out. So she's done a seven inch and a, an LP. So I've got uh, her performing before that documentary. Oh, that's with, excellent. Yeah. I Wilson. saw her perform in front of, uh, at the Crosstown uh, film series, she sang in front of some uh, old footage you know, you know what all what I'm talking about from a church, yeah, from yeah, a ministry. Yeah. He's going to switch you out there. Um, she was terrific, and she'll be singing at any Memphis this year. Yeah, yeah, she'll she'll be uh, doing that. Uh, I believe it's on uh, that Friday night, but but don't hold me to that. Uh, but yeah, before before the uh, Divine Spiritual Doc, there's three docs that I think are playing together. Yeah, they're tell all, us what's coming up that you're excited about. all kind of about. short films, but uh, she'll, she'll be before that one. So yeah, there, there's a lot of really great ones there. Uh, there's another one on uh, a lot of kind of undiscovered or, you know, uh, blues artists that maybe didn't record on major labels, mm -hmm. but that were great. You know, uh, along the lines of, you know, things that maybe, uh, you know, Goner would have released like uh, Reverend John Wilkins. Uh, it's called Deep Blues. It's a, a film from 92 that they're uh, putting back out again, has gotten uh, you know, a new treatment. So uh, that's one that'll be playing uh, over at the uh, Summer Avenue um, uh, Drive-In Theater. There'll, there'll be a lot out there this year. That, that's one that oh, I'm Oh, Malco's about. Summer Drive-In. That's great. Yeah. You guys have some films playing out there. Yeah, yeah. The, the, there's going to be a good number that are outside uh, there, as well as uh, at the Crosstown Theater, at Circuit, and Playhouse. Uh, but yeah, Deep Blues is a cool one. The uh, Divine Spirituals uh, one is great. Uh, w another one like Deep Blues that's a uh, you know a, a film that they're kind of bringing back and has gotten a new treatment is uh, called Radio On. It's a British mm -hmm. film for the late '70s, and it's sort of a uh, murder mystery thriller existential road uh sort of film uh but the soundtrack's killer it's uh you know bowie and craft work and reckless eric uh just a, a lot of really really great stuff so that that one i'm excited about um uh there's a great doc on uh polystyrene uh, that's coming out uh that was actually done by her daughter oh wow. and, and it really deals with a lot of the tension that she uh felt uh as a female artist uh performing in a punk scene that really was not very you know uh supportive uh during her time the effect that it had on her and the effect that it had on her and her daughter's uh relationship 
Uh, so it, that's a it's a really great film. Um, and most Bobby, people know she's the singer from X Ray Specs, the the yeah, 70s. Yeah. Well, they they didn't last much past the 70s, but 70s punk band kind of it, British. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Great and, stuff. And and there'll be uh, you know uh, the McStays who uh, I, I work with at Shangri La, uh, Jared and Lori McStay. Yeah. Yeah, Woo-hoo. Shangri La. Right? Yeah, yeah. I should we should have mentioned you're also your co owner of Shangri La. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So th- so they'll be playing before that. You know, uh, pu- putting a little uh, you know uh, punk thing together and, and playing for um, uh, the audience there. I think that's at Circuit uh, Theater on Sunday the 24th uh, I believe that's correct um, but yeah th- there's a lot of those uh, and, one, and one that I'm interested one that I think is interesting too maybe you have a little insight on is don't they also have a, uh, a program with a lot of short music videos and short films as well like I noticed Don lifted he has a new album coming out he's in Memphis is he in Memphis yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, are you familiar uh, so, with that so Lawrence Matthews uh, is this just unbelievable artist. He he does uh, a lot of uh, murals that you'll see around town, mm-hmm. uh, but but definitely a multidisciplinary artist. And uh, a lot of the work that he's done um, uh, over the last number of years has been under the moniker Don Lifted, as you mentioned. And yeah, his uh, new record comes out on uh, Fat Possum next Friday. Uh, and uh, that's that's his first uh, vinyl release. So I know he's really excited about it. And he has a show coming up, uh, if I'm not mistaken, on the 29th at uh, Crosstown in the theater. Uh-huh. Uh, but yeah, yeah. And in the program, they'll be showing loads of videos from. Is it all Memphis acts, or do people send them from all over the country? So, so there's uh, a, a whole uh, swath of. Uh, uh, videos that come from across the country that are in a music video competition, but there is a short block uh, just for just locals Memphis. as well. So uh, that, that's one thing that the festival does really well is dividing up uh, stuff uh, with local and national, but also working the local stuff in uh, with national so it doesn't feel like it's just some kind of hokey you know thing that they're doing uh, just to have some local things in. It really you know fits in well with the entire program. I noticed they're also doing a... Uh a screening of something that I missed the first time it came. It did come to that Crosstown screening uh, series. But the, the Sisters with Transistors, the, the documentary about the um, about oh, female composers doing, the, um, isn't it? Oh, no, I've lost it now. What's this thing? Oh, oh, the yeah, the theremin. Theremin. Right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, right. uh-huh. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Theremin. Yeah, composers. I think that sounds real interesting. Yeah. Or, or I think actually it's broader than that. It's a lot of electronic. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's electronic music across the board. But Clara Bol- Bolton or yeah, yeah, she was and, a theremin expert. Uh huh. Really Wendy really, Carlos. A, a lot of those uh, mm-hmm. women that really, you know, uh, initially were not as well known, but you know, some of them were, uh, you know, at the BBC and really. Mm-hmm. Uh, going beyond what anybody really expected uh, to be done with any of those instruments and, and working them into a lot of the films and, and television programs that were done there. And, and then that kind of you know blew up from there. So the documentary sort of you know takes that whole story in. Another one that sounds very specific is res metal. Are you, have you, are you familiar with the res metal? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that one's uh, lo- looking at uh, reservations uh, uh, across the United States and uh, the metal scenes that are particular uh, to those, and, and it's going to highlight that and show you know some of these bands that you know are are sometimes not known outside of those reservations or only known on certain reservations and and don't necessarily uh you know have the same touring capacity uh that others would but wow um, yeah that's interesting to me because I, I, I wonder what the um you know well i guess we'll find we have to watch and find out i can't speculate on how they would communicate that yeah. sort of thing so we'll, we'll, we'll be glad to find out about that and uh I think I just lost track. Oh, I wanted to talk to you. So tickets are on sale now. The festival starts on the 20th and goes to the 25th. Uh, and I saw that they're doing some uh, virtual work as well. So some of this you'll be able to see virtually. And you, do you know have much insight into that? Some of it is live and some of it's virtual. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and this is what y'all did last year as well, or was it all virtual last year? It, it, it was almost mostly all virtual. Last year, uh, we, we were able to work with uh, Shelby Farms and, and a couple uh, other places. Uh, the outdoor uh, uh, space, I'm forgetting the name of it, at GPAC. Um, 
but uh, they also have some some large screens, and, and so we were able to do some stuff strictly outdoors last year. Uh, this year, we're going to be able to do a combination of outdoor screenings, uh, m- mostly at that summer drive-in uh, we talked about earlier, uh, and then uh, a lot of virtual. Most everything that is showing at the Film Fest will be available virtually, uh, but those tickets are limited. Uh, right. a, a lot of the licensing you know requires that they only allow so much so uh yeah if, if you want to do that you don't want to get out and, and go see the films do de- definitely jump on those virtually uh but then otherwise there'll be uh films showing at uh circuit playhouse on the square and uh crosstown and for attendees that'll be a, a vax card or uh, proof of vaccine required and masks indoors uh you know for safety's sake all right any uh, anything you particularly want to talk about that i missed or Man, and that, that hit most of it. Uh, it sounds like a lot of exciting stuff just on the music end. And they got a lot of other crazy th- uh, things going on there outside of music. One that I want to see is called Alien on Stage, where somebody staged the movie Alien. How, how can that work? <laughs> you have to see a documentary to find out what did they do to make that a reality, for instance. That's just one of the many films that I read about on the website. And what is the website that they can look all this information up on? Yeah, it's r- real easy. IndieMemphis.com. IndieMemphis.com, right there. The film festival starts. We want to thank John Miller for coming by. And you can see John Miller at the festival or behind the counter at shangri right? Mm-hmm. Behind the counter at shangri Records. Go over there, talk to him, ask him about some of these movies, especially if he's real busy. And... Uh, <laughs> Indie Memphis is October 20th and 25th. Tickets are available, yep. on sale, ready to go. All right, do it. Take a look. And uh, that puts us towards, is this our last talk? This is it. This is the end of the show. I just have this guy do the show. What am I doing? Is this the end of the show? Let's see. Next more. Oh, okay. So I got closing remarks. I'm sorry. I should have been reading this. Uh, the next show is going to be November 19th. We're going to be right back here at the Lamplighter. Um, that's yeah, That's all that's here. What else is here? That's the only closing remark here. So, well, let's, let's review, because this has been a, a crazy show. So, um, let's see. Uh, Bennett works for MemphisForAll.com. Honey Blunt has a show right here on Monday nights. Should have written this all. John Miller... Uh, Indie Memphis Film Festival. Who says, you know, screw New York, right? Who the hell? We got plenty of stuff going on here right here in Midtown. And that's just Midtown. In fact, screw downtown. That's right here, right here in Midtown Memphis, Tennessee, right? So, uh, yeah, check out those websites, and I hope you'll join us again for another Goner Television. Read your liner notes and, uh, and try to enjoy yourself. Thanks for watching. Thanks again, John. Have a nice uh, rest of the weekend. And I think we got, a, we got some more Gonerfest video to show you while we sit here and pretend to talk to each other. Because we're really not. We're just faking it. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Here's Total Hell. All right. place on the planet that I would like to be right now in Memphis and see a Goner Fest. I've been waiting for this forever, but I fucked up because it's my niece's sixth birthday and I'm missing it. She's projecting the cartoon version of Mulan in the backyard, but I decided to be here. But if you'd indulge me for 20 seconds, let's sing her happy birthday. Her name is Haley. Let's do the punk version though so we can get total hell up here. So here. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Haley. Happy birthday to you. All right, thank you very much. This is Total Hell, which ironically was the weather forecast for this afternoon. Here you go. (laughs) 